Ah, there's some rough weather on every board, General. Ah, oh, Miss Locke. Those children need is a touch of the cap and not of the auto. What those children need, Admiral, is a touch of happiness. Willoughby. They'll get stuck before the guests arrive. Everything's under control, ma'am. And what's about the cake? Cooling on the tray, waiting to be iced. And are you sure you know how to ice it? Quite sure. And in case you're worried, I have not been exchanged by the fairies for a total nincompoop. No. No. <laughs> well, I'll just go up and check the drawing room. I'd like to be of some help, Miss Brill. And I'd like to be rich, but the good Lord thought otherwise. Miss Brill, Mother wants you in the drawing room. Well, she can't have me. I've enough on my plate as it is. She says you can tell Robertson I what to do. Does she indeed? Well, why don't I go have a smoke near the gas works for good measure? <laughs> I don't mind, Miss Brill, honest. <sighs> All right. I will give you one task and one task only, and so help me, if you get this wrong, I will swing for you and sing as they pull the lever. What is it, Miss Brill? Put the icing tools next to, th next to the cake. Then I'll need a bowl of hot, hot water to warm them. I will make the icing as soon as I'm back. I sing to some cake, hot water. You'll make the icing as soon as you get back. Now, do you think you can manage all that? Is that all? For you, yes. For me, no. Once the cake's done, I have the sandwiches next, because Madam wants them fresh. So I can't start them until there's no time to finish them. I swear, a slave in ancient room was on pleasure cruise compared to my life in this household. Well, don't just stand there, Robertson I. Right, Miss Jane. What are you looking for? Uh, a bowl for water? Michael, why don't we just make the icing? Because we don't know how. Don't be so feeble and get me the eggs. If Miss Brill can do it, it can't be that hard. Are there eggs and icing? I don't think Miss Brill would thank you, Miss Jane. Then she will be guilty of great ingratitude. Is it supposed to look like this? That's not how Miss Brill does it. Don't be so impertinent and get me the cake. Honestly, Miss Jane, I was only trying. I would. <laughs> Robertson I? Mrs. Brown, go. What have you done? Robertson I? Robertson I? Oh, dear, should I call a doctor? I don't think that will be necessary, ma'am. How can you be so unkind when you know how important my party is? You do deserve some very nasty medicine. Oh, just you wait till bedtime. Oh, I don't think we should wait till then, ma'am. Why not go up and get changed? We'll clear up, won't we? But we're not ill. I won't take it, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Open. It's strawberry ice. Now you. I'm not sure I like strawberry ice. I'm not sure I care. Open. <laughs> Lime cordial. Now off we go, you two. Michael, I know you like to keep things neat. Jane. Must we? Can't Robertson I do it when he wakes up? He is a servant. With that attitude, you'll get through a lot of staff before you're very old. And besides, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap. The job's a game. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake. A lark, a spree. It's very clear to see. That a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine. 
Have you made your decision? I believe so, sir. Well, good, good. But to be sure, it's the right one. What objections could you have? My security is more than adequate, and Latin America is an expanding market. What's the matter, man? Have you no courage? But Mr. Von Hustler, what I haven't been able to grasp is, what exactly is your final product? Why? Money, of course. Yes, money, but making money out of money, is that enough? Are you mad enough to be a banker? Great men have dreams of building an empire to make their name in many distant lands. And in this new world, I am told, we'll soon strike gold. But seize that chance with both our hands. It comes to your decision, Mr. Banks. There's a town of good people whose future depends on you. I know that. Give us this chance. You won't regret it. Factories could be up and weak and expanding before the year's out. Please, Mr. Banks, I've given everything I've got. Believe me. I do believe you, Mr. Northbrook, and I've tried to find a way, but that's just not the collateral. What about my workforce? Decent men who want a better life. They're my collateral. <coughs> my men have dreamed to earn an honest living. A wife and kids, a home to call their own. If you'd invest in us today, it paves the way. I promise we'd repay the loan. I'm sorry, Mr. Northbrook, but I can't. Hello, Daddy! What on earth are you doing here? Can't you see I'm busy? No, no. We're done. And no man should be too busy for his own children. What are you here for, young man? Have you come for some money as well? Uh, hardly. What would they need money for? <laughs> well, it's never too early to learn its value. I know the value of this. A sixpence. No, that's its worth. Its value is in how you spend it. Do good, and may you have good luck. And what do you say to Mr. Northbrook? Thank, Thank you. you. I'll wait outside. Really, Mary Poppins? What is the meaning of this? I am not without a sense of humor. Aren't you, Daddy? No, I am not. But when I was a little boy, I would have never dared interrupt my father. Were you ever a little boy? Of course I was. <laughs> But my nanny, Miss Andrew, kept me out of my father's way, and he had been very annoyed if she hadn't. What about your mother? I shouldn't think I saw either one of them more than once a week. Didn't they mind? Mind? They were glad to be rid of me. Then who kissed you goodnight? Miss Andrew? Certainly not! There were no time for hugs and kisses and all that soppy nonsense. What's the matter? Poor Daddy. Poor? What do you mean, Paul? So it may be the man I am today. Eh, hey, Mary Poppins? Yes, I'm afraid it did. <laughs> well, you've seen where I work, and I have a great deal to do. When you invest in the bank's money, what do you look for, Daddy? A good man or a good idea? I suppose I should say it's a good idea. But a good man is much rarer and much more valuable. Come along, children. Mr. Von Hustler, I've considered your arguments and I'm afraid my answer is no. So you don't recognize a good idea when you see one? Perhaps not. But I recognize a good man when I see one. You will regret this, M. Banks. A man with dreams that life hasn't broken. A man with hopes, ambitions to fulfill. A man you're certain at first glance Deserves a chance. When exactly could the factory open, Mr. Northbrook? Thank you, sir. You won't regret this.
don't point. And for your information, she is not in the least bit horrible. But she's just a bundle of rags. When will you learn to look past what you see? Well, each day to the steps of St. Paul's, the little old bird woman comes. In her own special way to the people she calls. Come by my bags of pride. Come feed the little birds, show them your care, and you Stop is a problem. How do you learn to talk dog? How do you think? Master the grammar. Practice when you can. And avoid mongrels. Far, Far too much slang. <laughs> now come along, I can't stand here all day talking shop. Talking shop? What a silly expression. There's nothing silly about it in the least. What do you buy at a talking shop? Conversations, of course. Well, I've never heard of a talking shop. Well, there is only one, and it belongs to Miss Corey. Who's Miss Corey? <laughs> Who's Mrs. Corey? Mrs. Corey is older than anyone in the world. She talked of Vlad before he went impaling, to William before he went conquering, and to Alexander when he was so great. We'll have to call it a shop in the park. There's no shop in the park. Remember, anything can happen if you let it. Good day, 
say to you, Miss Cordia? Well, 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 if it isn't Mary Poppins <gasps> with Jane and Michael Banks. She knows us? And I was poor little Georgie. Who? <laughs> Georgie Banks, your father. He used to give his nanny to slip and come here to my shop in secret. But it can't happen the same, George Banks. It would be 40 years ago and no one can remember back that far. <gasps> Listen, dearie, I remember everything. I remember Georgie used to love my gingerbread. <gasps> I wonder if we have any left today. Annie, Fanny, look like me! Yes, mother. <laughs> there you are, gingerbread pieces with gingerbread stars. Ah, uh ah, -uh. Georgie always saved the stars. Now, Mary Poppins, what can I do for you? Well, I did want an ounce of conversation. I'm right out of conversations, and I'm right out of words, too. You see, I've had a lot of chatterboxes in here today, but let me see what we have left. Oh, I do have some letters! And a little bit of back chat, and as you say, that'll be 15 letters. Go on, take your pick. Jane, you can choose seven. I've got a D, G, L, U, C, L, and I. They're not good. You can't make a conversation out of them. Your turn, Michael. Seven more. A, F, S, E, T, O, and P. And I'll choose an X. <gasps> now, what words can we make? Well, I see dog and cat. Rutaplex, that's nine. Lepidiferous. That's eleven, nearly there. Those don't count. You made them up. And where do you think words came from in the first place? Somebody had to make them up. You know, we can always use the same letter more than once. Now, let's see. Super califragilistic expialidocious. That's not a word. Of course it's a word. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think it's going to prove a rather useful one. When trying to express oneself, it's frankly quite absurd To leave through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word A little spontaneity keeps conversation keen You need to find a word to say precisely what you mean Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud enough you'll always sound precocious Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious Chatting simply grunting would suffice. Though if they'd heard this word, they might have used it once or twice. I'm sure Egyptian pharaohs would have grasped it in a chip. In every single pyramid would bear this hieroglyph. Oh, super catapragalistic, expialidocious. Say it and what animals will not seem so ferocious. Add some further flourishes, it's so rococo kosher. Ha ha. Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious, hum de little, hum de lie, hum de little, hum de lie, hum de little, hum de lie, hum de little, hum de lie. Druids could have come on their mighty monoliths. The ancient Greeks had certain what have used it in their myths. I'm sure the Roman Empire only entered their abyss because those Latin scholars never had a word like this. Supercalifragilistic, expialidocious. If you say it softly, the effect can be obnoxious. Check your breath before you speak in case it's halitocious. <laughs> Eighteen consonants and sixteen vowels as well, and put them in in order, which is very hard to spell. S U P E R C A L I F R A G I L I S T I C E X P I A 
A-L-I-D. Oh, C-I-O-U-S. Eleven clocks. S-U-P-E-R. Exactly what it's bringing. Good news or bad, happy or sad, the pendulum keeps swinging. You are never to come near that face, nor anyone else but me, neither. That is an heirloom. Heirloom? And while I do this, stay totally immobile. Immobile? Do not move a muscle. Muscle? Do not even breathe. Do you hear me? German chap alone. It seems he went to our chief rivals and they gave him the money, and it's turned into a gold mine. Well, they can't expect you to get it right every time. Can't they? That's exactly what they expect. Oh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, if you say it loud enough... That is more than loud enough. Go to your room. But we were just... I don't care, you were just upstairs now. Where's my briefcase? I put it here. Michael? Jane? Will you give it to me? Must I put up with this behavior? You're their mother, can't you do something? Well, I can try not shouting for a start. Mary Poppins, you are here to teach the children manners and look at them. They're a pair of little savages. If I had it my way, you'd be out of this house oh. by... You're tired. Mary Poppins, don't bring the children down tonight. Mr. Banks is quite exhausted. Perhaps you could keep him occupied? I hope you haven't forgotten, ma'am. Tonight's my evening out. What? Oh, dear. I had forgotten. I suppose the best people wouldn't ask you to change your plans? No, ma'am. They wouldn't. I thought not. It's not fair. Daddy loses his temper and we get shut up in the nursery. Daddy's mean and rotten and I hate him. Jane, 
take that back this instant. I will not have you criticize your father. Why not? He criticizes you. Last week, he said you were neither use nor ornament. How dare you? I heard him say it, and so did you. Sometimes, people say things they don't mean. Take the children upstairs, please, Mary Poppins. <laughs> George. What is it now? I thought you might like to talk about it. What would be the point? Perhaps I can help. Don't be ridiculous. George, I'm serious. If you have troubles, I'd like to share them. Don't worry. You will. The fact is, I've been suspended without salary until the bank decides what to do with me. Twists and turns. Ups and downs, one moment smiles, next moment friends, but bad temper faces had better change quick, cause if the wind changes, the face might just stick. Chim chim on e chim chim, chubby chim chub. children? Wouldn't that be rather upside down? Sometimes families are upside down. For a while, anyway. I don't want an upside down family. I wish I could just run away. Why don't you? Somebody might adopt you. You'd miss me too much. No, I wouldn't. I could have your toys. No, you could not. Yes, I could, and I jolly well would. Give that to me! 